Hello viewers, a very special day in the world of Gran Turismo because the Manufacturers Cup is finally back. A five round championship, all in group three cars. And I need to pick my manufacturer. I'm gonna go with... This is a 35 lap race at Suzuka. It's gonna be a very long one, around about 80 minutes in total. This race was actually used in the Amsterdam finals about a month ago. And during that race, there was lots of rain, which made it very interesting. So we're gonna jump in, hope for the best. Let's see what we can do for McLaren. Now I was jumping into this very late. I had about one minute of practice, which is kind of stupid and I definitely don't recommend it. But after this little warm up, we went straight into quali. All right, qualifying first up, quite a short one, five minutes. So maybe only enough for two laps, maybe three. Okay, let's jump into our first flying lap. And on the exit of Degna 1, going quite wide. And that is unfortunately going to grant me a half second penalty, which is kind of, well, kills your lap really, as the guy behind goes very wide. So going to serve this penalty here. And in a closely fought lobby, Half a second penalty is going to kill your time. So 202.6, but really we need to be getting a low 201 or better, preferably into the two minutes uh, flat. So we go again. Now the McLaren feeling pretty decent. It's come to my attention that this car has been actually pretty good recently in Group 3. Uh, McLaren's never normally been one of the best cars, but it's been used a fair amount recently by lots of drivers. And I, I thought I'd give it a go. I haven't been McLaren as a manufacturer since the GT Sport days, so quite a while. It's been about three or four years. So it's good to be back with them. Into the hairpin. And this lap is going a lot better than the previous. We're about a quarter of a second up by this point. Coming around towards a Spoon. Always a difficult corner to get right. Back off the power, let the car coast through. Then this second exit, or the second part of the corner, very crucial as you're going on to this long back straight towards 130R. Cars behind keeping us similar distance to the beginning of the lap. So that's a good sign that this lap is okay. One second up, given that we didn't have to serve this penalty on this lap, we could still gain time here. Through the final chicane, taking as much of the track and the curve as possible, and then keeping to the right-hand side to shorten the lap. And we're going to round it off with a two minute point nine, which was a decent lap. You see it there initially put me towards the front, but in the end, it was good enough for ninth. Okay, ninth on the grid. It could definitely be better, but I think for my first proper qualifying in that session, it, it's not too bad. Uh, it's a long race. Let's see what we can do. Okay, long race, guys. 35 laps. We're looking at an hour and 20 i think so this is going to be about consistency and judging the rain if and when it arrives let's do it okay jumping in 35 whole laps of suzuka it's going to be a long one and i can tell you this was a very iconic race i think in terms of gran turismo 7 when polyphony get it dead right with the weather with the race length it's amazing how good of a race you can have and this one I really enjoyed. So let's jump in. Starting ninth on the grid, lots of cars in front, uh, eight cars to be precise. And um, this first lap really just about settling in. It's a long race, as we've just said, just, uh, just touched upon. We've got lots of time to try to get the work done, to try to move towards the front of the pack. So let's not rush things for the time being. Now running around towards Degna 1 and 2, trying to give myself a bit of a gap, a bit of a, a line of sight with the cars in front. Now fortunately, this race is about to get worse quite quickly here. As we go into the hairpin, I break maybe about five metres too late, go into the back of the car in front. We also receive a touch from behind. And quite crucially, that's going to give me front and rear bumper damage. Now something I forgot to mention earlier, about the settings for this race. Heavy damage is on. And that means that this damage will not repair itself automatically, which it normally does in this game, if you don't have the heavy damage setting, that is. Uh, normally it, uh, it repairs itself after a good, let's say, 20 seconds. But here, I am not going to be able to do that. It's going to have to be repaired in the pit lane. 
So this is not ideal and you can see the effect it's having because the car in front is easily pulling away on the straight, the car behind is easily gaining. So all of a sudden I'm a bit of a sitting duck here on the second half of this lap which is a lot of straight lines and of course across the start finish line which we're just coming up to now. So already this, <laughs> this is going to be a very difficult race but we've touched upon it many times it's a long race we're gonna to have to just get our head down and just try to put in as many good laps as possible now here we're going to defend our position from the m6 behind which is actually in the livery of an m4 interestingly so this is going to be a tough stint and um, we're kind of just hoping for this rain and you see the car behind with a penalty we're hoping for cars behind to get penalties to slow each other down if I can get back into the slipstream, that would help. But as I just touched upon, there is a hint of rain, which is what happened during the Amsterdam GT World Finals. Um, rain comes through about halfway into the race, and that will obviously change the strategy of this race from simply 35 laps on hard tyres to something a little bit more interesting, which would involve some strategy and some pit stops. End of lap two, you can see the cars in front really beginning to pull away. It's becoming very difficult indeed to keep up. Two seconds the gap. I feel comfortable with the McLaren. The car feels good. Um, it doesn't feel overtly strong in any one particular area, but uh, lots of cars queuing up behind now to try to get past. Uh, it feels like it's got good handling. It feels like it's got decent acceleration and top speed. Obviously not at the moment with the damage. But you see here the Dodge Viper easily flying through is like I was standing still with a GP2 engine on lap 4 a fellow McLaren user there take a nice little trip into Barry R and so we gain back a position now you see here the rain coming in now this rain was it's, it's a pattern of rain which I've never seen in this game before because it came in extremely slowly and I feel like uh, Polyphonia have really actually utilised the weather in a really good way with this race. It seemed uh, quite a realistic race and I would love to see more of this. Uh, for those of you who did this GT1 uh, Manufacturers Cup race number one, maybe you'll agree that it was, it was an interesting one, let's put it that way. Um, there was certainly a lot to think about over the course of this race. So losing a position here to Apex Twin, who we had a very good battle with in last week's Daily Race C. He's going to go through in the Peugeot. And once again, I'm going to just try and keep up, which I didn't, as you can see. At the end of lap number five, start of lap number six. And here goes the M4 GT3. I mean, it is actually an M6, but they've quite interestingly put a livery on, which makes it look like the M4. And on that note, Polyphony, please do add some new GT3 cars. That would be great. End of lap number seven. And the situation isn't really getting much better. 20 seconds off the lead. I mean, my lap times are consistent at least. Still improving into the 202s there. But um, yeah, this is the end of lap number nine now. You see the skies are definitely much more grey. This McLaren, which spun out earlier at Degna 1, or Degna 2, sorry, recovering. And I don't know if he has damage or not, but he went quite easily past then. So we're down into 12th, almost 13th for a moment there from the Italian. And this is now lap number 10. This is where things begin to get interesting. You can see clearly the weather and the conditions are changing. As we head through Spoon Corner, there is definitely some moisture on the circuit. You can see the track is a different colour. I'm feeling the lack of grip here and the rain is coming in from that end of the track from the uh, the north uh, west uh, end which is this end of the track uh, as we head into spoon and this lap it got even worse you can see the mclaren having a hard time keeping on the circuit and i'm actually having a hard time here on the exit traction really coming at a premium and almost losing control of the car so this is, this is going to become a very testing couple of laps but actually quite useful for me because this gives me a chance to come into the pit lane, get uh, the inters on, anticipating that this weather is going to get far worse. And of course, we can repair the damage. So I no longer have the bodywork damage on the car. So this lap is quite an important one. Any lap where the conditions are changing and you change the tyres, 
is quite crucial. We are 50.2 seconds behind the leader, so this is going to be quite interesting. In fact, let's take a look at the gap to the leader as we head into the wettest part of the track. So I lost another two seconds by the, by the time we got to here. So presumably the leader is still on slicks. And look at the amount of time I gained through that one corner alone. Four seconds in one turn, simply because of I'm on the correct tyre for that corner at least. So this was a really interesting junction in terms of the strategy, knowing what to do at the right time. This guy is going to forget to turn. <laughs> He's going to go straight on. And you can see by now the conditions are really deteriorating at this corner. That guy, that's what happens when you're on the slicks. He's left it, I would say, too long. And it looks like I think I made the right call at the right time. Uh, the guys at the front there making the switch from the hard over to the inter. And I think they perhaps went one lap too late. And I think the lap I did it was the right lap to do it. So I think I've made the right decision there. So things slowly coming back into our favour at this point in the race. We are now half an hour into the race, 14 laps in. But we still have 21 laps to do. You see the gap to the cars in front so even though i'm still a little bit off we are slowly moving our way towards them this is the end of lap 14 things became very treacherous here at the other end of the track you see we are fully engulfed in the worst of the weather now so the entire track is under the rain and this uh, therefore is going to make this quite a treacherous couple of laps so we really do have to be very very careful here especially with the curbs, as they kind of hold a lot of moisture, a lot of puddles. It's very easy to get caught out. And I would say that the McLaren actually really excelled in these conditions. It actually felt quite nice. It felt decent to control. Yes, of course, we're going to have some big moments where the car wants to break away, but that's going to kind of happen to everyone in these kinds of conditions. And in fact, comparing my gap to the leader, I was actually gaining on the leader at this point in time. So... I was happy with the pace, almost losing control there, just like that guy, another McLaren, actually losing control. So just as I say that the McLaren has good handling in these conditions, a McLaren throws it off in the rain. So I'm up into P8. That's higher than where I started. So that's a positive. And cars are getting closer and closer to us in front. So this is a good sign. 3.130R carried a little bit too much speed, had to bail out over the tarmac over to the other side off the curb into the final chicane and look how treacherous this is almost going off onto the astro astroturf pretty much do actually so some cars going in to change over to the wets and i felt like that wasn't the right strategy call because you'd be stranded on the wets when it dries out again and you can see here i mean it is going into wet weather territory when it starts going into the top bar there the darker blue then it really is very treacherous and the wet tyre is the best tyre to be on. But I think in terms of overall strategy, it wasn't the right call. So I stayed out on the inters. I think this was the right decision. We kind of had to weather the storm, literally, for a couple of laps. And then the inter tyre would come back as being the best tyre. At least for that part of the track. It seemed as though the uh, first corner, so now the southeast corner of the circuit, was the worst place to be in terms of grip. But as long as you get through to this part of the track, so let's say the middle and then the northeast corner, or the northwest corner, then you'd be you'd be actually okay. So you just had to drive a lot more carefully through that section, and I felt I felt like this was the right strategy call. Going into the pit lane and changing tyres, you're going to lose 15 seconds or so, and then you probably have to do it again later to switch back. Uh, so I, I felt like this was the right decision to make. Catching up with some cars in front here, we've got the Porsche, which was really good in these conditions. In fact, Porsche won the Manufacturer's Cup in Amsterdam a month ago, and it really excelled in the wet weather conditions. And therefore, I was looking at that car thinking that car is going to be quite hard to ca uh, catch up with or keep up with. How about the Nissan GTR just in front? We're going to go for sixth place. He's having a big moment there. I mean, this is normally flat out in the dry conditions, but... Even this long curve looping around towards Spoon Corner is quite tricky to navigate when it's uh, wet like this. So through Spoon, having a couple of moments there, a couple of corrections on the steering wheel. Trying to get on the power still as early as you can. Running the curb, quite dangerous game that. But we keep it under control. Into sixth position, 16 seconds off the lead. I say that this is certainly 
Uh, slowly w working in my favour this race. Carrying a bit too much speed there. We're going to have to bail out over the AstroTurf once again. And then into the final chicane. I don't feel like the grip is as bad as it was on the previous lap. So the wet tyre call was definitely the wrong one, I'd say. And we just had to be very careful on the inters here. I mean, you see, driving onto the main straight, again, this is normally flat out in the dry, but here just having a lot of corrections and moments going onto the main straight in towards turn one, really easy to outbreak yourself here even in the dry, let alone these conditions. And so just being really careful, knowing that this was the slowest part of the track. And the Mercedes has done a nice little pirouette into the wall. And I'm up into the top five. So this is a really handy position to be in. In the top five in our first race for McLaren. And I think if results continue like this, they're going to have to sign me up to the F1 team put me in there alongside Lando I mean that would be quite harsh on Oscar Piastri he's been driving quite well but who knows maybe I could do a better job but um lap number 20 by this point you can see the conditions once again changing 43 minutes into the race now and this is where things get actually you could argue even more difficult because yes there is more grip coming back we have a dry line forming but if you go off that line then you're in big trouble and you still have to watch out for the curbs the curbs as we mentioned earlier they still hold the moisture and sometimes you can't see it so you can hear it there as i just touched the exit curb of turn two the car wanting to break away so you have to still be very careful and judging the grip in these conditions is is, is really difficult it's not easy to do at all uh, case in point here one of the cars in front having a very big moment on the exit of the hairpin and as we bring it back to the full shot, we can kind of catch a glimpse. I think it was Apex Twin in front in the Peugeot having that moment. And so all of a sudden, fourth place was a very distinct possibility. As Mario Sonic in the Porsche, still just about three or four seconds in front, uh, clearly had the pace on me. I couldn't quite keep up with him. I'd say it had maybe half a second a lap and I, I couldn't really do much about trying to uh, keep up. Uh, the guy behind in the Nissan GTR, sorry, the uh, M4 uh, BMW, I kept them at arm's length, six seconds behind. But as we've seen in this kind of race, it's a long race, of course, and you can easily lose a lot of time for one mistake if you, if you drift wide or have a spin. Uh, you can easily lose like six, seven seconds or more. And therefore, that kind of gap is never completely safe. So onto the back straight, lap number 23 now. And I was just wondering if this guy had damage because his car all of a sudden wasn't very quick. And this was quite a big factor in this race, damage. You really did have to be careful. And it wasn't easy to do so in such testing and treacherous conditions. So the mighty Iggy from second place going into the pit lane with into tyres and that would presumably be the switch over back to the uh, the slicks as does Mario Sonic from wet tyres goes on to uh, the, the slicks as well I decided to go around one more lap I wasn't completely comfortable changing on to slick tyres just yet at this point so I thought you know what I'm going to leave it we're going to come up to a lapper car here who has a three second penalty presumably, presumably therefore cutting the line on the exit so a lot of cars actually you might have noticed coming into the pit lane so i fear that i might have left this one lap too late being careful on the pit lane entry as we change back to the hard tire so i feel like we've made the right strategy call so far uh, but this is going to be my worst moment of the race by a long shot coming out the pit lane and immediately turning left and it's such an innocuous mistake, such a stupid mistake to make. A lack of grip on that side of the track. We're on slick tyres, cold slicks. And the right-hand side, the pit lane exit, just had no grip. It wasn't drying out over there. It was drying out on the racing line, but not on the pit lane exit. And, I mean, we can watch it again. And you can see the expression upon my face as I <laughs> realised how stupid that was. Really such a stupid mistake. And I couldn't believe I did it. Should have just been a little bit more careful... And unfortunately, we have rear damage once again. Now, thankfully, we don't have front damage because that was pretty bad in the opening stint of the race. I really 
I was probably losing a second a lap, I'd say. So here, yes, of course, we're going to be at a deficit to some extent, but perhaps not as bad as before. So we still have a fighting chance here. Fifth place is right in front of us. Yes, we do have to serve this three-second penalty, which is very annoying, of course, when you, you've made a mistake and lost a lot of time. But uh, it is what it is. So this uh, part of the race is really about just judging the conditions. And you see here, having a hard time of doing that, running the curbs, and I made the decision really by this point that the curbs are probably best avoided, at least for now. We need, we need to wait a little bit longer to really uh, start using those again. And by this phase of the race, you can see that it was very much a spread out race. Uh, six seconds of the car in front, Kay the car going into the pit lane. So I still have a chance here of gaining a position back as he comes in for his stop. And it seemed like quite a late stop. So I should be able to jump him here, I would have thought, as we come out onto the main straight and cross the line to begin lap number 26. 55 minutes into this race but still 10 laps left to go heading down towards turn one and yes he just come out of the pit lane there in fact let's take a look at the gap it's going to take a couple of moments here to fully level out as he came out just behind and had to obviously take it nice and easy on the exit which i didn't and it settles to about five seconds so that's a healthy margin to have but again as i touched upon a moment ago it's not a given that you're going to stay ahead in these kinds of conditions, especially with 10 laps left to go. That's still 20 minutes of racing. And so five seconds can easily be caught up in that sort of time. And that was the really big test about this length of race, having to be consistent for an extended period of time. And I really enjoyed this test, to be honest. And I think Polyphony uh, would be well advised to try to keep these somewhat longer races in to some extent in this game i think they they do test us in a different way especially with the weather as well okay to the kai the full extent of the gap came up to about 6.4 seconds this is the beginning of lap number 27 and for the moment it looked quite comfortable running a little bit towards the edge there of the dry patch and that was quite risky just trying to avoid the the curb on the exit there of turn two but after another lap, the gap came down to 5.4, another lap 4.1, and then later on, at the beginning of lap 32, it was down to 0.7. So as you can probably tell, over the course of this last couple of laps, he felt a lot more comfortable than I did in these conditions. And this was one of my weaker points of the race. I would say the, the wet weather, I was quite good, quite strong, and I felt one of the quickest cars on the track. But here, I, I couldn't really quite acclimatise myself to where the grip was or have the confidence to really push. Not that the car was bad, but uh, we also had the damage, which wasn't helping. Um, but this guy was driving pretty good in the Nis Nissan GTR. It's, it's a good handling car. And I think it was probably working well, quite well for him at this point of the race. So coming around to Degna 1, I knew that if I could just keep it on the track and not make any glaring mistakes as we... Begin to, take, uh, begin to take the curbs now. I knew that he would still have difficulty trying to overtake me. I could still try to force him towards the wetter parts of the track, which would really compromise his line. Uh, it is quite hard to overtake when you have these mixed conditions because you can just force the other driver towards the wet patch and then they're going to have no, no grip, really. I would say by lap 32, which we're on here, it doesn't really look like there's actually much of a wet patch going on the outside of the track. So um, I'm just going to have to drive nice and consistently from here to the end of the race and try to protect this top five. And I think a top five would be a really solid result, given that it's our first race for McLaren, minimal practice, started in ninth and had to do quite a lot of work early on with the damage, uh, losing a lot of time in that first stint. But here, my life was about to become... A lot easier as we take a look at the radar here on the exit turn two and i think he's touched the curb there and he's done a nice little pirouette met the wall and boom suddenly that gap is going to open up to about 11 seconds or 10 seconds there it is yeah 11 seconds and so with the final couple of laps i was very comfortable now I knew that I could just bring it home. There wasn't really any chance of catching up with fourth, who was 10 seconds ahead. By this point, 14 seconds ahead. So I was able to bring this home. It was a nice little sunset 
to bring us home after one hour and 16 minutes of racing. It was a really entertaining race, really testing conditions, and it just shows you what this game can be like when Polyphony really put some thought into a race. This was, uh, this was a very, very good and fun race. Crossing the line, eventually to finish in fifth for McLaren. P5, guys, we were the first McLaren in the race. That was a really difficult race, minimal practice, testing conditions and i've got to say that was really fun trying to judge that this is what gran turismo can be like when they really utilize all of the features available that was a really fun race so after the race it was nice to jump into the uh, replay here and just take a look at a couple of incidents okay firstly let's take a look at what happened to the kai just behind me putting a lot of pressure on and there it was hitting barrier very late on so yeah, by this point, pretty much all of the curbs are dried out, apart from clearly that one. And one mistake and boom, he's in the wall. But then how about my big mistake, guys? Turning left immediately out of the pit lane. <laughs> and yeah, it was such a stupid crash. There was just no grip on that side of the track. I didn't really think to be careful. I should have done, obviously. I lost maybe 10 seconds, plus the three second penalty, plus that position. So I think fourth might have been possible if not for this. So let's take a look at the standings. I am seventh for McLaren overall. And uh, there's three rounds to count in this championship. And my aim is to get above 900 points in total. So I need to average above 300 here. Um, so I need to have a couple more very good scores. 274 is good for me, but I could definitely get above 300. And I think that's where I need to be aiming. 72nd place in EMEA, I think. We need to be getting towards the top 50, I think, at least. And there's our standings overall at the moment. So that's the end of round number one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.